Hello guys, my name is Stephanie and this is Garden of Mirth. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to walk you through our first time handling broody mamas from the beginning of setting all the way to chicks hatching. We have successfully hatched 17 chicks, so I'm going to show you that whole process from start to finish and introduce you to our coop and how we keep our chickens. You can see our girls behind us. We have some um, electric netting around our coop. Our coop is actually built on a trailer, so we can move them all around our property. We have a little bit less than four and a half acres, and so we have plenty of room to move them around. We have rain catchment built into our coop design so that all of the water that runs off of our coop roof goes straight into a 15 gallon barrel with a spigot on it, so we can water our chickens no matter where they are on the property. This has been an absolute game changer and I think that any coop we have from here on out will be equipped with that. We also have an automatic coop door and this is my number one requirement for all coops that we make going forward. It is so handy to not have to come out rain, shine, light, dark, early, late and worry about chickens going in or out. This automatic coop door was super easy to use. We didn't have to train our chickens. They got it very quickly. And there's also a warning for the chickens. They have like a last call. If anybody didn't make it in the first round, the door will pop back open after 15 minutes or so, and they'll go back in. So if you have any stragglers, this omelet automatic coop door has been phenomenal. Right now, we only have six chickens because our broody mamas are out with their respective clutches. This is how we have evolved to keeping chickens. We've had static coops, we've had tiny TSC coops, we've had a pretty much any setup you can think of. This is our favorite. We love being able to move them around. They're not staying on the same barren soil or poop covered soil. They get to move to fresh grass anytime that we have uh, the opportunity to move them, which is pretty frequently. So we can either keep them on like hay or wood chips if we wanna make compost, or we can move them around as free fertilizer. So right now they're in the orchard. We have a couple of apple trees just out of shot on the other side of the fence. And then right here behind me is one of our pear trees. And on the other side of their fence is another pear tree. So right now they're working on fertilizing for us and they're also just enjoying fresh grass and bugs. So let's go ahead and meet our ladies. This is Eleanor. Most of the eggs we're hatching that came from our farm are hers. She is an Easter egger and lays a blue green egg. Then we have one of our bantams. She's the only bantam actually left from my original flock. Her name is Gwen. That's Thelma, one of my golden laced wine dots. They know I don't have treats, so they're going back to where I laid the treats. And then that is Theodosia. The black Australorp is Sophia. And then the other black hen with the feathered legs next to Eleanor is Mauve. So most of the babies will be hers out of the ones that come from our farm and then the rest of them come from another farm because I didn't have enough fertile eggs. So I got some from a friend. And take a look at our broody mama. This is Dash. She is a super committed mama. She only has six eggs. Um, she started being broody when my husband was still doing chicken chores and I kind of took back over. This is more of my passion than his. And she had been sitting for three days already at that point. We did offer her three, two or three more eggs. And um, so now she has a total of six. So she's done taking eggs because I don't want them to be hatching four or five days apart because the odds of them all making it are pretty slim. She's gonna want to tend to those babies. So the ones that are still in the nest are gonna get neglected. So um, because of that, I'm just gonna let her keep her six. I have been candling them. This is the first time I've ever candled eggs. So I'm new to this, but I did see what is typical growth in two of them. And then three of them are so dark and the eggshell is so thick. I'm having a hard time seeing anything. 
So I'm just going to let those roll. Um, we did have a rooster for our eight hens. So the odds of them not being fertilized are pretty slim. Um, so we're just going to hope that they are. A couple of the eggs were the newest and I hadn't been able to see growth in them yet because they were just a day or two old. So I'll come back and candle in a few days. Dash is really near and dear to my heart because she is the chicken who has survived everything. She is named Dash because she was in the dashboard of my Jeep on um, arrival to our farm. She jumped out of her box even though it had a lid on it and she somehow wiggled her way past the floorboard upholstery and got all the way up under like where the brake pedals connect to everything. So we have a picture where my husband had to remove all of that upholstery um, up under the dash to peel that back and to finally get in there. We It took forever to get her out, but we got her out. She lived through that. She's lived through um, a dog attack and not our dogs, but she's lived through that. She's lived through all kinds of things. So dashboard is special. And uh, now Dash is going to be a mama. And you did hear me correctly when I said broody mamas because we have two. Dorthula is also broody. Yeah. And I'm going to give her some eggs so she has a decent sized clutch to hatch out. Also, yes, I'm wearing a gardening glove. She pecks pretty hard. Some don't. She's pretty vicious. You want this egg? Here, stay still. Okay, I gave her an egg. We'll see if she tucks it under. Take your egg, mama. She sees the egg. <gasps> she took it. Okay. So I just picked up two dozen eggs from a lady at church who has um, a ton of different chicken breeds and she has some free range roosters. So these will be mixes of some sort, but we definitely have some Americana um, eggs and then she kind of listed off a ton of different breeds. Um, all of which I would be totally fine having. So I'm so excited. I'm going to go offer some of these, especially these dark brown and these colorful eggs to Dorthula. Um, of course, the color that this egg is right now does not mean that that's what that hen would lay if there's a hen hatched from it. Um, but it gives me a slight idea of genetics. So I'm going to mark these with a Sharpie and then I'm going to go offer these to her. The reason I'm marking these is so I know that this is an egg that I gave her and not an egg that another hen laid. All right, I actually caught Dorthula off the nest. So while she is not here, I'm gonna mark the three eggs that she has. This blue one is what we gave her earlier. And then this looks like an egg from my Bantam, which my Bantam is really old. I don't think that the odds of this being fertilized are super high. However, this bantam is one of my original hens. She's actually the only one that is still alive from the very first, can't talk. She's the only one alive from the very first flock that I had in, in uh, town. So I kind of am going to give her a shot. So I'm going to mark these three. I ducked in the greenhouse and got one of these um sharpie peel off china markers this is what i use to mark plant labels and i'm going to use this to mark her eggs so i'm going to mark these real quick and then we'll add others to it all right i've got our three eggs marked and now i'm just going to add this dozen that i've selected um, i kind of got a mix of everything but i made sure to get all of the colorful eggs all of the dark brown and then a few of these lighter colored eggs in here just to give us a good mix. These are not purebred eggs, so they are going to be barnyard mixes anyway, which is totally fine. Um, but I can at least know that the mother's genetics created these colorful eggs or these dark eggs. And that gives me an idea of what possible um, egg colors that any potential hens would lay. So I'm going to go ahead and add these in to our nest. Okay, so I've got all of those eggs in there. Right now she's getting a bite to eat, getting a drink. 
So hopefully tonight she comes in and lays on these and hatches these babies out for us. Dorthula did end up accepting all of those eggs and she sat on them and was a great broody mama. Chickens incubate their eggs for 21 days. So I'm gonna put some timestamps on these clips so you can kind of see the progression. But most of the 21 days was just me going out and checking on the moms. They really don't need any help. They do what comes naturally. So for the most part, it's going to look kind of like we jumped from week one all the way to week three, but there's just not a whole lot that goes on. I am going to include some clips here of candling eggs. I actually did this several times throughout the 21 days, um, but only one time did I get a chance to film it. Okay, you can definitely see the veining in there. And then right in here. There you can see movement. Dash and Dorothea started sitting on eggs about a week apart. So there is a week difference between their due dates, if you will. So Dash will hatch first. And then I'll show some clips of Dorothea hatching out her clutch. Well, today... The girls have decided to switch babies. Now this is Dorothea. She's much fiercer. She's not a happy camper. Anytime you mess with her, she's mad. She's a very, very broody mama. But she's sitting on Dash's original eggs. So she's trying to take the shortcut to motherhood. And then over here, we have Dash. Dash is much sweeter. A bit calmer. I mean, she would definitely peck you if you went for her eggs, but she's not she's not near as mean. Not the best filming conditions, but I've basically broken down a cardboard box that I'm gonna use to make a collar around the milk crate nesting box because I'm paranoid that a chick is gonna fall out into our main coop and it's not gonna be really easy to get a hold of it that way. So just as a preventative measure, I'm going to put this around the outside of the milk crate. Dash should not be getting up anymore. She should kind of be in lockdown period from my understanding, but she can still get in and out if she needs to or wants to. But this would hopefully keep those chicks in and I'll be doing regular chick checks throughout the day, but we're supposed to get pretty bad storms. So I'm hoping that this will save any chicks that might be tempted to jump out, especially given Dash's history. Okay, I've got this in here and I tried to disturb her as little as possible, but I put cardboard underneath these to block off the openings underneath. And then there's that collar that goes all the way around. And then I left the flaps on the bottom so it seals off the bottom too. I know I'm paranoid about this, but like I said, when you've had Dash here, who ended up literally under the dashboard of my car, makes you second guess a few things. Um, and just in case they hatch during the major storm, this will buy me some time, hopefully. So I'm gonna kind of leave these pressed up against each other. And then I went ahead and extended it just a little bit. I don't know if you can see back in there. Just a little bit back in there as well until the next milk crate starts. So hopefully, hopefully, this keeps everybody safe if they were to hatch um, when I'm not out here. So um, I'm gonna leave her alone. I know she's tired of being messed with, but hopefully this provides a solution. But as you can see, they can't, um, or it doesn't block Dash getting out or other hens coming in to lay in the empty nest box. So there we go. All right, we're gonna shut them in for the night. Night dash. All right, my cardboard collar survived the night. So I was gonna show you what it looks like in daylight. So I folded the ends of the cardboard in so it blocks off this opening here. You can see that, but makes a solid wall around them, but they can still fly in if they need to lay an egg in these other open nest boxes. So here's Dash this morning. She should be having chicks today or tomorrow. Can I look under you? Can't see anything. Oh guys, look! 
there's a cracked egg. I think she has a chick. Oh, I think she has a chick. We're gonna have to check. This is definitely the most protective that Dash has ever acted. So I'm thinking she has a baby in there. Guys, we have a sweet baby chick. I know this is not good camera angles, but we have a sweet baby. Time to get them moved. All kinds of sweet little peeps. Huh. There's a baby. I see another egg that's popped. Okay, there's a white eggshell right by that chick's mouth. So there's another baby because he came from a blue egg. There's baby number two. There's baby number one. Of course, this would happen when it's storming. Just saw some pretty severe lightning back there. So I'm gonna move quick because I don't want to be out here in this. I'm not gonna move them right now because she has eggs that are not hatched that I saw, but I am gonna do a quick check before I go in. Hopefully I can move her if she's hatched here in an hour or so. All right, this is day three of hatching. You can tell she's still definitely broody and not happy. We've been removing chicks as they hatch to go take them to the brooder, getting them food and water. Um, so she's encouraged to finish hatching the eggs she still has. They were set about three days apart, um, kind of unintentionally. So we're just letting her finish out hatching and then we're gonna give her all of her chicks back. testy about it but I'm pretty sure that we have I see a broken eggshell underneath thank you I see a broken eggshell right there underneath her she's pecking pretty pretty voraciously it doesn't really hurt but it's not the most fun thing in the world so I'm thinking she has a baby I'm hearing little little peeps so I'm gonna see what she has see if she might be completely done so I'm gonna see if she's done hatching Can see all six babies are doing great mama's doing great so we're just awaiting Dorothea to have her babies and we'll have all of our chicks here all right i've got Dorothea here we could be having chicks any day so i'm gonna do a quick candle and then i'm gonna give her her eggs back she has 13 she pushed one oh that's terrible filming here we go she pushed one out of the nest. Uh, she just instinctively knew that it was not developing. And then one was cracked before it ever developed. So she ended up with 13 out of the 15. I've seen a lot of development in all of them that were um, not thick, not too thick uh, to see through. So if they were eggs that I could see anything, I could see definite growth. So I have a pretty good feeling about these eggs. I think we'll be seeing some baby chicks here in just a couple days like she might at least have some eggs that are pipping i'm hearing some faint taps so i'm going to check underneath her real quick Somebody's getting close because I hear some little peeps. <gasps> Guys, we've got an egg that's pip 
sleeping. You can hear that sweet baby peeping in there. All right. Well, that's super exciting. I'm gonna face him with the pip side up. Let's see if we've got anybody else. process is beginning. All right, I'm going to let her go back in. Also, I make sure we don't have any extras. Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen. Okay, She's got all of her babies. I'm going to put her back in here so carefully because I don't want her to crack eggs and I'm not going to move her. Now listen, I just said I was going to put you in gentle. you got to be gentle too. Here. play my gentle game. She wasn't as interested, but she didn't damage anybody. She's okay. So she's going to go back down over those eggs. We're going to have a baby by tomorrow. Good job, mama. hatching out 11 beautiful chicks. All the chicks and mama are doing great. We had two eggs that weren't viable, but we had 11 perfect chicks hatch. So I'm very happy with that. Part of the reason that I wanted to make this video is to show how easy it is to raise chicks using a broody hen. The broody hen spends each and every day taking care of those chicks for you. She keeps them warm. She teaches them how to eat, how to drink, how to scratch and forage for bugs and seeds. All I have to do when I raise chicks using a broody hen is refill feeders and waters. That's it. I don't have to make sure of anything else. There's no worries of electricity going off and not having heat for the babies. The broody mom takes care of everything else for you. That is the easiest way to raise chicks by far. I hope you enjoyed hearing about our experience hatching chicks this year for the very first time. And I hope that you will join us for many more chicken videos in the future. If you enjoy learning how to cook from scratch, preserve food, grow a garden, raise chickens, and other homesteading activities, I hope you will like and subscribe to our channel. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you've ever raised chicks using a broody mom from start to finish and how you enjoyed it. Until next time, you can catch us on Facebook and Instagram and our blog, gardenofmirth.com. Bye, friends. Ah! <laughs> That's real life.